Hi, good evening. This is Kat. This is the fifth installment of the series, uh, A Christian's Journey, and this will be titled, How to Study the Bible. So if you're a new Christian, if you have come to the Lord and come to Jesus, and if you haven't watched any of the other videos, I suggest going back and watching those first and then catching up with this one. Um, if you're a new Christian, and um, you have no idea um, what to do. Um, you usually start in Matthew, the book of Matthew. And I know at first you're like, okay, how am I going to do this? I'm not going to understand it, but I'm here to make it easier for you to understand it. As I had a mentor that helped me, I'm going to help you out. So let's go. If you have your Bible, we're going to turn to Matthew chapter 2. Yeah, just wait a few seconds for you to do that. And then I'm going to start talking, and if uh, you haven't gotten there yet, just pause it and, and go back. And what you're going to do is you're going to, when you read a chapter, and like I said in my other videos, this is the Bible. In the Bible are, I have tabs. They're all called books of the Bible. There are different books in, in this in this Bible. And in each book there are many chapters. Chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, how many of the chapters there are. I think at the most there was like I don't I have no idea. Never mind. <laughs> um so what you need to do is you go to that chapter. And when, if you're a beginner, unless the Lord leads you otherwise, you do one chapter a day. And you need to get the main synopsis of the chapter, which means you have to get the, um, the main thought. Um, you have to get the important words. So, let me start. And get a highlighter or a pen, underline it. I wouldn't circle it because you do a lot of underlining. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem, and usually um, towns are important in the Bible, they are important in the Bible, so you might want to do towns in one color of a highlighter and the names of the people in another. Um, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. So that, that, the little bit was one verse. It was one, two, three, four lines. So let's just take that one verse and let's go slow. So how many words in this one verse do you think that is important for you to underline? For you to keep the main thought in your head to do? Now, not as much after, no. Jesus. Jesus is an important person, so you're going to want to un underline Jesus. Was born in Bethlehem. Well, for him to be born, that was pretty important, you know, to, to be the resurrection, the king. So, underline that one. And then, in, usually in towns. Now, now, if you're in another book, like Deuteronomy, or Judges, or something, and they're always talking about towns, then... Then I wouldn't underline them, but it's right here. It's important, especially in Matthew. So you would, and be careful when it says Bethlehem of Judea. So Bethlehem is in Judea. So you might want to just underline one of those. In the days of Herod the king, in the days they important? No, not so much. Of Herod. That's another name. He's a king. So Herod the king. Underline. Behold, means therefore, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. Now wise men is an important word. You're going to want to underline that one. From the east. And you can underline east. And then came to Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is where Jesus was born. 
or Bethlehem and Jerusalem. Sorry, it's my laptop. So that was the first verse. Pretty easy, right? It's not so hard. And let's do the second verse. Saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. And that's it for the second one. So, saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? What is important in that line? Saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? So, whatever you think that would be there, I'm helping you out today. Um, it would be born king of the Jews. For we have seen, maybe put underlined seen, his star and have come to worship him you might un want to underline worship him so that is how you do the main the main thought what you want to do in your scriptures is not only learn it but apply it in your life but if you're just sitting there going la, 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 okay I'm done today check check I mean, that's not going to work. You're going to really have to. And at first it might be hard. It was really hard for me at first. And then I got up to three a day. And for a while I got up to about four or five a day. And then I kind of had to go back because it was a lot. Especially for the book. It depends on the books you're reading. Like um, for Psalms. For me, I did like four a day because they were, they were not so in depth. But the ones that are just kind of on the surface, just, you know. Are easier to do so you might want to do more of those a day but you don't want to do for a newbie I wouldn't say unless you're really highly intelligent and you got it so quick that you would want to do more than three a day for a newbie for a new Christian to Christ so then let's do number four and instead of me helping you out with that one why don't you why don't you choose to underline the things on your own and then after a few minutes of silence, a few moments of silence, I will help you out and tell you which ones they were. Or if you cheat you can get just fast forward, but that's not the whole purpose of this. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. We were just talking about Her Herod in the in the previous verse. So, Herod is he. So, and when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. Now, I'll give you about a good 15 seconds to figure out which one of those, or, or few, you should underline. Okay, did you get it yet? So I'm going to tell you which ones that I would underline. And I would just, instead of reading the whole thing, I would just underline gathered, chief priests, scribes, together, inquired, where Christ Born. Okay. And um, let's go on to number five. And I'm, there's 23 verses in this chapter. And we're on number four. <laughs> so we're already at ten minutes, so let's get going. So they said to him in Bethlehem of Judea, For thus it is written by the prophet, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. And that was number six. And usually, and it, it, it was in like a little paragraph. Usually, 
those are important in itself so I don't underline, but I did underline the last part. Who will shepherd my people Israel? Because God is the shepherd. We are the sheep. We are the ba <laughs> Just a little humor here at uh, 12 o'clock at night. Um, so, and then the next one, um, seven, then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared, and he sent to them Bethlehem, to Bethlehem, and said, go and search carefully for the young child, and bring, I'm sorry, for the young child, and when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. So I would put, for me, I would put, sent them, um, sent them, search, and bring back word to me. It doesn't have to be a lot. It's just, just enough for your brain to catch it. For it to kind of clink, you know, clink over just like a switch. So that's already 12 minutes. And I hope that I've helped you. This is this pretty much pretty much what it is. It's the synopsis. It's it's the main thought of the whole of the whole chapter. Just underline them and and at first I started reading them um, quietly to myself and then um, the Lord told me to read it out loud because sometimes sometimes I would I would catch myself kind of in a book you know and it doesn't make sense and I'd read it over and over and over again but then when I read it out loud I would kind of hear myself and it made sense when in doubt ask God God will tell you God will help you so that is how to do a Bible study. That is not, not to do a Bible study, but that is how to study the Bible. And do, you know, if you're a newbie and you're not you're new at this and you're just brand new, just do one a day. And just pray that the Lord will open your heart. And usually when I, before I, I do my scriptures, I just pray the same old prayer, you know. Not in repentance, but in earnestly, I would say, Lord Father, open my ears, my heart, my mind for your understanding, for, for, for me to understand what you want me to understand when I read and I do my scriptures. This is called doing your scriptures. And they should be done daily. I can't say that I do. I'm not a great example. But I have done many over the years. And um, the Lord will lead you. God has called you to be his and you felt that calling and you came to God, God will lead you. And if you don't hear his voice and, and or whatever, because you might not in the beginning, then just um, try to ask uh, elders of the church. You need to get into a good church. Um, I can't tell you what the church is best for you. The Lord will lead you. And um, when in doubt, go online. Go chat with people. But remember, there are wolves. And sheep's clothing, which means there are people that pretend to be Christian that are not. I'm not trying to make you fear, but it is a it is a reality. And they're everywhere. <laughs> so, Lord Father, I pray that whoever is watching these, that you lead to watch these, Lord God, that that they earnestly and sincerely come to you, Father. And they want to learn about you. They want to learn about your son. They, they pray that they have inquisitive and questioning minds, Lord. And I just pray that you lead them, Father, to where you want them to be. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. God will lead you. God has called you and he calls all his children. He will lead you. So it's about 15 minutes. Time's up. I hope you um, learned a few things. And feel free to ask me any kind of questions you want. And like I said, if I don't have the answers, I'll ask an elder in the church. And if they don't have the answers, then we ask God. So, well, actually, God doesn't come last, but 
You know what I mean? For the toughy, toughy questions. So God bless you, and I'll see you soon.